ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار once a woman she came to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and she came and told me as a sister i some women the sahabi had got together and they chose me as a representative of them they asked me to come and speak to you and you know the women when they sit together they have a conference they talk to each other but they are concerned not like the women today and look at the subhanallah the concern that they had when the women <coughs> from the time of you know, from the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were sitting together what would they talk about and what would be their main concern so they got together they were not shouting and flying okay they were not like a diva or a small talk or you know any kind of uh, gossip so she came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this sahabia radiyallahu anha <coughs> and she said that the women have sent me to you so she came to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she expressed the concern of the women and she said the men you know they have this opportunity of going <coughs> for jihad in saudi arabia and they have this opportunity of going uh, going out in the way of allah and earning all these rewards and if they are far tired they will get or they are harmed they will be rewarded by allah azza wa jalla because this is the pinnacle of islam to go out in the way of allah you know that's the that's the highest one of the highest levels of iman so if they will die they will go and they will get blessed by allah azza wa jalla and if they die Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still keep them alive as Allah says in the Quran do not call those who have died in the way of Allah as dead and Allah will give him the rest the sustenance from that from himself and we women we look after them we do these chores for them in the house you know the wives of uh, the sahaba and they get these great opportunities and we serve them and we look after them and we do this as if to say that you know the way she presented to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as if to say these were little things chores it did not account to the highest level of reward that they would get when they go out in the, the way of Allah and die in the way of Allah and they will be living forever so it was trivial so what do we do how do we come to this level is what she was trying to ask prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he looked at the sahaba they were sitting over there and he was really pleased by the way by the concern she gave it to him she did not come complaining she did not come you know with a basket full of complaints that she wanted to divorce and there's this sister who wants to divorce she has a problem with her husband or you know that sister also or that sahabi you know She came and said, "How do we achieve this level?" So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so pleased. 
He smiled and he looked at the other Sahaba. And he said, do you hear this? Do you hear this beautiful question, the beautiful way, the, the, the concern that she has? And then she replied to this lady. And she said, and, and Rasulullah he said, go back and let them know. Go back and tell them that being obedient to your husband is equivalent. Being obedient to your husband is equivalent to all these things that you mentioned before. So if they are going out and you are obedient in your house, if they are going out for the da'wah, or they are going out for bringing sustenance, or they are going out in the way of Allah, or they get shaheed in the way of Allah, you are obedient to your husband in the, in the house, you get reward for all of this. And you will get the reward for the, for the jihad as well. This is your true jihad. Go and tell them. And then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did not stop there. He said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ كُنَّا يَفْعَلُونَ But there are very few who would achieve something like this. There are very few, very few of the women who would still be patient and continue doing obedience. It's not a, a ta'a. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. But there are very few who would achieve this. And but they are. And he said, Allah does not look at the woman who is not thankful and obedient to her husband. You know? Saying sometimes, get away from me. You know, you're such a person. I need a divorce from you. And so on. But being patient and being obedient. What is this level? What is this uh, meaning of uh, What is the meaning of obedience? The majority of the problems today, and this, the subject of the, you know, the khutbah today is dealing with relationships of husband and wife. With relationships <coughs> of the most important, the backbone, the most important unit of our society. Today we are plagued with the increase in the divorce rates. We are plagued with the increase in the problems between men and women. And when we look back into what is actually causing these problems, we will realize that we have actually adapted lifestyle and cultures of those people who are actually cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have, when we have a problem, if you ask yourself, you know, in the house, there was one brother I saw, I, I've been seeing him for the past few years in this masjid. And inshallah he's there, perhaps one of you, uh, amongst one of you, I, I don't see him. But uh, I saw him after a year, I said, brother, what happened to you? MashaAllah, last year I saw you, pitch black hair, you know, beard, MashaAllah. Notice I had to look for the, you know, any sign of his age or, because I couldn't figure out how old this brother is and he's MashaAllah, mature brother. The next year I said, what happened to you? You know, white hair coming, sprouting out from everywhere. He said, you know, brother, there's a lot of problems, there's tension in the house. SubhanAllah. There is some tension and stress in the house because of which I think it's already showing on your face. And Prophet ﷺ used to make a dua. Oh Allah, oh Allah, protect me from a wife who will make me older in my young age. Protect me from the, from the, the wife will make me old in young age. So if this is happening because of the stress and problems, as long as this brother, subhanAllah, is a good brother who tries hard to go and pray in the masjid five times a day. He strives hard to bring the sustenance in the house. He strives hard to do all his responsibilities and duties that he needs to take care of. Of course, none of us, nobody, is perfect. And every, every one of us have problems in our you know, weaknesses. So if you see something that you dislike, let's say in a brother, Allah even tells us in the Quran to speak in the best manner, in the best words, even to mankind. And the, the if you reply something 
that you want to reply to an evil word that has been told to you. This is a general advice given to you in the Quran. So the problem in our societies and the problem between relationships that escalates is not nothing but because of sometimes just a single word. And that word rolls on into a huge argument. And that argument rolls on into a huge, you know, like, like a snowball falling off from the, from the mountain. And it turns, it ends up into a huge, huge ball of, you know, destructive that if it falls onto something, it will destroy it. Whether it's a house or whether it's a person, it will kill it. It turns into such a huge problem. And it starts with one word. And the majority of the times you will see, not only, and Allah is giving, for example, this example that I gave you in the Quran, is to speak a good word when somebody speaks to you evil. So what about between a husband and wife? What about, what about between a brother and another brother? What about between your own family members, about whom Allah Azzawajal says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladina amu, hu anfusakum anibu. Save yourselves and your families from the hellfire. How do we deal with this? So both of them have to acquire a kind of etiquette and a way that Allah Azzawajal teaches us through Prophet Muhammad and the Sahabiyah. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, he, tell, he, he used to deal with these problems in such a beautiful manner. Allah Azzawajal, He says in the Quran, Wallahu, وَاللَّهَ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ That Allah Azza wa Jal has made for you azwaj of your own kind and has made for you from your wives, son and grandsons and has bestowed on you good provision. And Allah is, you know, He's talking about when He's mentioning the wives and the sons, He is mentioning Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same ayah, Allah is mentioning these things as a ni'mah from Allah When He's giving you the wives, when He's giving you, giving you children from them, and when He's bestowed you good provision, do they then believe in false deities and deny the favor of Allah? Do you come into the traps of shaitan and deny these favors of Allah? If you are not able to respect or able to be you know, thankful for the ni'mah, for the anam that Allah has given you, you are actually being unthankful to Allah and you're being unthankful. Whoever is not thankful to people is not thankful to Allah. This is what Prophet says. So eventually when you look at it, in the end the problem comes because of the way we deal with, with our problems. The way we, the, the ikhlaq that they, we deal with. And one word, for example, Prophet Muhammad has even mentioned, and this is, this is in dealing how, you know, there are so many benefits you can derived from one example of Rasulullah From one example of Rasulullah How he dealt with his wives. And we can also derive from the wives of Muhammad and from the Sahabiyah of Muhammad how they dealt with their husbands. Once Aisha radiallahu anha, she came to Prophet Muhammad um, Prophet Muhammad had just newly married Safiya radiallahu anha. So Aisha was very, very inquisitive and very, you know, a jealous, uh, you know, she had a lot of dhira, which can only be translated as jealousy, but dhira means, it's a very deep word. It means, uh, you know, she has protective men, and she has jealousy, and she has, you know, all these things that a woman can have for, for her man. So she went to look in the house of Safiya, you know, to peep and see how Safiya looked, the newly married wife of Muhammad you know. 
So she went to look and she found Sophia very pretty. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he patted her. She didn't know that Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw her. And he patted her, he said, Ya Aisha, what do you think about her? What do you think about her? She said, what can I think about her? She is a Jew and a daughter of a Jew. Because Safiya, before Islam, she was, you know, from the Jewish tribe and she had become Muslim. Prophet Muhammad was not very pleased with this. However, in another incident, when this continued, Prophet Muhammad Aisha anha, once Safiya sent anha, food to Muhammad's house. Once the food had come and, uh, you know, Aisha anha, with her jealousy, Look at how one word can actually pollute and give a bitter taste in a relationship and spoil so many good things. So this food came in and she was so vexed and jealous, she couldn't keep to herself. And she said, what do you like about this woman? You know, what do you like about this woman? And she, oh, she just did this. She is like this and she was about to continue. Meaning she's short. She's even short. She's not, you know, that physically attractive. That's what she was trying to say. Point a defect in her. And this is a co-wife. And this is uh, from the Sahaba, the Sahabiya. So, so Prophet Muhammad SAW, he got upset. And he stopped her right there before she could even mention the word. She had just made this action of her hand, you know, with a gesture showing that she's shocked. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, Ya Aisha, this word that you are about to say, this word that you would even mention, it was, about, it was put in an ocean. If it were put in an ocean, the whole ocean will get polluted and bitter. So sometimes, my brothers, my sisters, even for the men, it's the same thing. You know, none of us can achieve the character of Muhammad Sallallahu And in some cases, even the Sahaba, majority of us. However, the most important thing is that we deal with patience and character as much as possible with our dealings. When Allah is telling us in general, generally, about dealing when somebody says anything bad, you say something good in return. Imagine your wife or your husband says something. He comes tired from the work. And, and the husbands, they shouldn't be doing that in any way. You come tired, you come and be relaxed in the house. Calm down, relax yourselves, wash yourself. In, in, in. If you're really tired, make wudu, make two rakas salah, lie down. If you've been upset from work with your boss or you know whatever dealings you have with people, come home and don't bring vent out on your on your family. But in case the husband says something, imagine what happens if the wife replies to him. He's already come angry or upset with something and he doesn't know what the problem. And a wise woman, she knows exactly how to deal with her husband. Once uh, Asma. You know, a man came to her. You see how the hikmah of a good, righteous woman and the one who knows the respect and Allah, as, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned to this lady who came to her representing the whole bunch of women. Go back and tell them to be obedient in ta'a with your husband and you will achieve the level of jihad and shahada as well. That is the high level of obedience to your husband. So when uh, Asma, uh, Asma radiallahu anh, she was so, uh, Zubair in Rawam, she was, he was the husband of Asma. And Zubair was a very jealous, he had a lot of lira, and he was a very jealous and very protective husband. And Asma knew this very well about him. Once a man, very poor old man, he came to Asma when Zubair was not there to the house and he wanted the shade, that, you know, to sit in the shade of their house. He was really poor. He wanted to sit in the shade of their house and do some business or whatever, you know, his, his work. So Asma, he, she said to this man, why don't you come back when Zubair is at home? Because she knew how Zubair was. If he finds out without, and she spoke to a man, and you know, he came and uh, she allowed, it could be a problem. 
So see how she has dealt in beautiful wisdom in order to please her husband, in order to please Allah Azza wa Jalla. As Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned in the hadith, only four things if a woman does, she can enter into Jannah from any gate that she wants. And one of them was to, to, to be in obedience, in obedience to her husband. So she, she knew the character of Zubair, that she, he might get upset. So she said, come back when Zubair is at home. So he went and he came back. When he comes back, he pretends that he never came. And he comes and he asks, Zubair was there at home, in front of Zubair. Can I use your shade, you know, of your house and sit down with you? She said, what's the problem with you? Why can't you find some other house? He's really surprised. You know, she told me, come back. When Zubair is there. She said, go on. You didn't find any other house. You came here. Zubair, he overheard this. Because eventually, to help a traveler, a poor person, this is what the Sahaba and the Sahabia always strove for in order to collect good deeds. So on the day of judgment, these good deeds will be counted in their account and they will be inshallah successful. And they knew that no matter, Allah knows what, Allah is the one who can get pleased with anything that they do. And it might be accepted by Allah and Allah will make them successful. This was their aim. This is why the Sahabiyah came and asked about the level, you know, to reach in that level of, uh, 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 of a mujahid. Because this is the 24-7, the Sahaba and the Sahabiyah used to think about Jannah, used to think about the Akhirah, used to think about the Hellfire. 24-7, this was their concern in every action they did. So this was a very good deed. She couldn't have refused, but she used her intellect and her wisdom in order to gain this reward, but also to keep her husband happy. And also not to displease her husband. Because the deed of helping another person, a poor person, is much, much, much more little and trivial compared to displeasing her husband or making her husband happy. It is nothing compared to this. So when Zubair overheard that Asma is showing her off to this man, he said, why, what's the problem? Why are you telling him to go off? Then she, he said, why don't you let him sit and, you know, in our shade and do whatever he wants to do. And he's a poor man, he will also benefit from it. She said, exactly, okay, that's what you want? Okay, fine. Then she goes and tells him, okay, fine, you can sit. And you can stay here for as long as you want, outside their house. So subhanAllah, with the, with the word, with, with the wisdom and hikmah. But there are some, for example, some women who would use the same hikmah and wisdom for what? You know, they would be, the day that they want the husband to buy a gold ring, or I want a car, or I want to buy something like this, they would be, mashallah, alhamdulillah, and we've heard this from many uh, you know, cases. That they are in the best of character. Why they want to earn a gold ring, for example, or they want to go out somewhere in a place, or they want to buy something, they will be in the best of character. So when this the, the wiser woman is the one who actually takes into account why Allah Azza wa Jalla has created us and remembers that eventually. These material things are not the ones which are going to eventually benefit. These material things are house or furniture or you know the, the gold and the, the car or whatever is not the one that is actually going, going to benefit her. What is going to benefit her is the pleasure of Allah and the pleasure of her husband. Because in the first position for a woman comes the husband. When after she is married, not even a mother. Because the mother does not stay with her anyway. She stays in the house of her husband. So the first important person that comes in her, uh, you know, in her life is the husband. And she strives as hard as possible, as long as the husband is not ordering her to do something haram. As long as the husband is not forcing them to do something or even suggesting to do something or stopping them from, from doing their 
duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest of the habits and the rest of the problems and the rest of the weaknesses of the husband, the wife overlooks. And the husband does the same thing. Inshallah, we'll discuss about the husband because the brothers were smiling and laughing about many things that I mentioned. But now, inshallah, we'll also discuss some things that will be, inshallah, beneficial even for the for, for, for the husband that for the wives that will be beneficial, inshallah, for the husband's character. Inshallah, we'll, we'll discuss and we'll mention this in the second khutbah. That Allah Azawajal has created you from one soul and created from it its mate that he might dwell with tranquility and security in her. And look at this beautiful example that Allah is giving given to men in the Quran. First he said that he created and he reminds you that these women, he has created you from one soul, them from one soul. And the beautiful thing is that women, they were not, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created them as another creation from something else altogether, then perhaps there would be people like there have been in the past. There was one religious, the religious uh, sect or this religion, their, 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 their priests or whatever they are, they had a, an argument and debate once, just, just maybe 50, 60, 100 years back. They had an argument and debate whether the soul of a woman, the soul of a woman is the soul of animals or soul of the devil. This was a huge debate in their sect, a huge debate. So they didn't even give a chance. And this is not from, they were not from Islam, they are completely different religions. The debate was, and they had all gotten together to discuss and to come to a conclusion, whether the soul of a woman is a soul that is given to her is from, from animals or from the soul of the devil, you know, from the jinn. So they didn't even give a chance, you don't have any choice. You're not even humans. You can select for yourself whether you're from the shayateen or you're from the animals, from the haywanat. But Islam very clearly makes it very, very extremely, explicitly clear. And it gives us the indication that all humans, all, all people, these women, they are actually from your own bodies. Allah created Hawa, Eve, from your own soul, from your own body. He took out the rib and he created me and he blew one of the souls of the humans in, in her. So they're not different, they're, they're, they're actually a part of you. They're part of you and they complement you even though they're a different creation in that sense that their character is different, their body is different, but they're complementing you perfectly. And Allah has created by nature them to complement you, not to be not to ill-treat them or, or to be mistreated, but to realize that even though, uh, subhanAllah, like for example, once in a month, they should realize, you know, the husbands. And some of us, and this is why I was saying, majority of the time, one word or some few gestures or actions, they can lead to many problems. And the consciousness of a man, because Allah says about the man in the Quran, الرجال قوامون على النساء الرجال the, the, the man is actually a step ahead responsible not that you are bossy not that you are actually now the boss and you can do whatever you feel like and it's okay she is not actually obliged a woman 
she's not obliged to do your clothes. She's not obliged to do, make food for you. She's not obliged to be like a servant in the house. She's not, it's not what some of her obligations. But if she, inshallah, is doing all these things, like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when personally heard from outside, some screaming and shouting and, you know, admonishing sounds of a woman from a house. And Umar ibn al-Khattab came out of there, and he was the Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he was shocked and surprised to see Umar. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Amir, you are the leader of the Muslim Ummah. And what do I hear? Coming out, you know, the, these, these words and this admonishment. He said, shouldn't I be patient and thankful? Because she does my, you know, all the chores of the house. She makes food for me. She washes my clothes. She even does the dirty underwear, my, my brothers. She knows all your good and evil, bad secrets. But once in a month she comes in her face, for one week, most of us, we don't even know the date of our wives when is she in this position. Because this is the time even medically proven. And it's perhaps that's the time when she might get upset and she might. But if she doesn't, inshallah, she is one of the best characters. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا Speak to all mankind in the best and best features. So what about your own husband? What about your own wife? Say in the speak in the best manner, in the best speech. So perhaps that one month, and subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jalla has given us training from the time that we were small, from the time that we were young. First we had to deal with the anger of our mother. And once in a month we wonder what happened to Mama? What happened to Ummi? You know? She was so fine. And once in a month she just Drowns into some other personality. Allah has given us this training from childhood. So what about our wives? How should we deal with them? Because Allah is saying that you find your security and your tranquility and your repose in her. And Allah has created her for complimenting you. So how should you deal with it? Uh, how should you deal with her? The men, they should be dealing in the best manner because they are the tawabun. They are the heads and the leaders and the example in the house. Because if a woman comes angry and upset, her wife, the wife, the man should not reply. He should always remember the ayah of the Quran. That you, you speak something good in return of whatever bad. And this will also give a good example to the children. It will give a good example to the children that when somebody speaks to you in a rash manner, then you should be speaking to them in the best of speech. Once the Messenger of Allah was sitting with one of his companions, when another man passed by, and the man who was sitting with this with Prophet Sallallahu he said, I love this man for the sake of Allah, for Allah's sake. I love this man. And he was just telling this to Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> Then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, have you told him, have you said this to him ever before? The man, he replied to Prophet Sallallahu no, I never, ever mentioned this to him. He said, Prophet Sallallahu go and tell him then. Go and tell him. And then the, the man, he got up and he went and said to this, to this uh, brother to the Pope in Islam, I love you for the sake of Allah. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal created this bond because of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his character, because of how good he was with him, for whatever reasons. He said, I love you for the sake of Allah. And then the man replied, May Allah, for whose sake you love me, also love you. This is one of the things that is that we have forgotten in our in our homes, in our houses. Allah's Messenger وسلم, is telling this person to go and tell this man who was passing by. He's not even from his family. He's not from his blood relatives. He's not from any person who is you know from a close relation. 
He's just another Muslim person who he likes and loves for the sake of Allah. Prophet ﷺ advised him to go and tell this to him. How many times? Let us just count this in the last one month. All those brothers who are married. All those brothers who are married. How many times have you actually gone and told your wife for no reason? Not because she uh, gave you a nice massage on your feet or she cooked a very nice, beautiful, a very nice food or, or she gave or she made the house very clean or she pleased you in some way. For no reason. Because of the relationship. Because of what, what you deserve for each other. How many times just once in the past month gone and told your wife that you love you love her or you love her for the sake of Allah. Or you just love her. I love you, yeah. Pro Prophet Sassam used to even give nicknames to his wives. To Aisha, he used to call her Ya Ayush or Ya Aish. You can go and do that as well. This will only increase love between each other. This will only increase. You can call whatever names you want to. Ya Bubu, Ya Lulu, you know, Ya Khafiti. Anything you want, brothers. You know, you're, see? You are all smiling and feeling good, right? Imagine if you go and tell this to your wife. You don't even know me and you know, you know, the way I'm using these words. Imagine if you went and wouldn't it increase your love between each other? And then Prophet Sallallahu gave a very good advice to even the women. In case you have any problems between each other or any argument, in case you have any argument between each other, a righteous and good wife, in order to be in that status, you know what she does? She never lets her husband sleep in that angry or in that bad mood or even herself. She never let, 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 let this happen. Never let a problem sleep with a problem without doing something about it before you go to sleep. Prophet ﷺ gave this advice. A righteous and a good woman, she goes before he goes to sleep, put her hand in his hand, and she said, she tells him to forgive her, even if she was right about it. Because if you do not stop or finish this argument and you sleep with it, perhaps it will remain in the hearts for, for a long period and it will increase the problem the next day. And a mu'min and a Muslim, he never, he tries the one who has promised Jannah. You know, there was a Sahaba, Sahabi who would come and Prophet ﷺ, he would say, the next person who comes in, he is from Jannah. And two times, three times it happened and he's sitting and the same Sahabi keeps coming in and he says the next person who comes in, he's a, he's a person of Jannah. What about your husband and wife? And then one of the Sahaba, he went and stayed with this person, this Sahabi to see, what does he do that he is going to be a person of Jannah? And he went and saw and slept in his house with an excuse that, you know, he has a problem with his uh, father and I want to stay in your house. This, this Sahabi let him stay in the house. What did he find out? He doesn't do any special Salah in the night. He doesn't do any special deeds of charity. He doesn't excel in his voluntary deeds or natural deeds. And he got completely confused. He says, you know, I've given up. I made an excuse for three days. I stayed with you to find what do you do something special that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said that you will be from the person of Jannah. He said, I don't know. But perhaps because when before I go to sleep, before I go to sleep, I remove every rancor and hatred or any evil, any thought about any Muslim from my heart and I remove it from it before I clear it and I forgive them for the sake of it. What about you when you are husband and wife? So if we want to, my brothers and sisters, achieve Prophet with Aisha Dihana, you know, because she is one of the greatest narrators of uh, hadith. She is the fourth uh, greatest narrator of hadith. Aisha radiallahu We have so many examples of Muhammad sallallahu and his dealings with wives. And he would do this justice as much as possible with all his wives. 
He, she said that when Aisha Radiallahu she said, when I used to drink from a, from a cup, from a glass, and I would keep it down, Prophet Muhammad, you know, a person is sitting opposite to you. And if a person is sitting opposite, when you drink a glass and you put it down, your lip marks would be on one side and on the other side of the person, it would be nothing. It would be clean. What would normally people do? They will, when they want to drink from the same glass another person has drank, they will look for the lip marks. Where there is no lip marks, they will drink from there. Sometimes people might do that. But Prophet Muhammad used to turn the glass around. He would turn the glass around and see where the lips of Aisha was on the glass and put his lips to those to, to, on that area of the glass and drink from that. In front of her. To show not only by words but even by actions that how much muwadda and rahma he had for his wives. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us realize the most important that how important the, this unit in our society and its ummah is and makes us realize the importance between the husband and wife. Because shaitan as Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in the Quran, he wants to put evil between you. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said very clearly, one of the greatest achievements of shaitan is to split a husband and wife. Is to split a husband and wife. When people will come, when the other shayateen, they come to this place, he gets really happy when one of the shayateen of the jinn, they split a husband and wife. And he's 24-7 after you.